they want to come here. That would be a totally red flag. Why do you have to have Chinese and Mandarin on your resume in order to get a job? And if you're a native, you're, you have a better chance. How many, how many people in Mantino know Chinese or Mandarin? How many people in Kankakee College know Mandarin or Chinese? What, what do you think the chances are of Americans, Americans getting a job in that plant? How many? Thousands of Chinese have come across the border, the open borders, illegally. They know Chinese and Mandarin. Do you have any idea how many of them are going to come here illegally and get those jobs? Because the Chinese, they don't care. They're not going to follow these rules that they said they're, they don't follow them in, in China. And I just saw in the news before I came that China has invented a new deadly coronavirus. It was on the news. A deadly coronavirus. That's something to talk about. I wonder how much money Mr. Pritzer, and I hope none of you did, but money did they make off the, this Chinese thing and we given them eight, what is it, eight million, eight trillion, whatever money to come here? 2,000 to read, uh, do the plant, but 6,000 in their pockets of our money? I don't understand how you can even think about okaying it. This is America. This is America. And I don't see how you can't think or care about the people of Mantino and especially the children because when all of your terms are up. I really believe that you'll all. That's your time. Thank you. Next person is David Culkin. My name is David Kiken. Um, what I've learned in this process so far, far, I've learned that our mayor is a liar and deceiver. He lied about our questions being answered on the village website. At every board meeting, we were told that our questions would be answered. Never did I see one of my questions on the FAQ list. Either uh, they're not listening at these meetings or they just don't want to give us the info. He, he either deceived all the taxing bodies that had to vote on the tax breaks or he has deceived us that Goshen taxes would be beneficial to the resident taxpayers of our village. We've already seen the increase in our property taxes that will be due in 2024. We've seen the huge increase coming on our water bills to Aqua. He has led us residents to believe that the welcoming of Goshen to our community requires no notification of nor input by the village residents that it's just a business decision. Yet at the last 7 a.m. meeting when the Mantino Youth Baseball Softball League proposed lighting another field in Heritage Park, the mayor's response was that before that was done, there should be input from the residents. Lights at a baseball field should have resident input, but a CCBP-backed toxic battery plant should not, duh, I've learned that an unelected mayor appointed committee chairman who is really in charge of our town, a man that our mayor refers to in his emails as the master. I've learned that most of our village board could care less about the dangers and risks of this enterprise. It's more important that they back the local political swamp than objectively investigating the pros and cons of a toxic plant on top of a residential area. The security risk alone has been questioned by top international security experts. I've learned that despite all the health and safety risks, our safety officials are more concerned about winter weather driving than about developing any type of emergency re response plans that will be direly needed in the event of a catastrophe because of the risky plant they've supported. Not once have I heard anybody in this body suggest that this might be an innovative idea for the safety people to get involved in. Safety nets and lights for ball fields are definitely more important. 
the safety tour of the Goshen plant in Germany that the taxpayers paid for inspected a non-operational facility. Our fire chief submitted his findings in a detailed report that was shared at the planning committee meeting, but was, he wasn't in attendance to answer any questions. The planning committee and the village board apparently had no questions for our top safety official before making their decisions. That's just amazing. And you wonder why our trust in, in government officials is non existence. Thank you, it's your time. I got a half paragraph. Now, residents' questions cannot be answered because of an ongoing legal dispute. A gag order has sort of been issued over the trustees by our village attorney. I've heard of gag orders being issued by our judiciary, but I've never heard a lawyer tell anyone that they could not truthfully answer questions. My attorneys always advise me to tell the truth. Truthfulness can never get you into trouble. The trouble that our village is in now is a self-inflicted trouble by this body. Next person is Denise Nicholson. Hi, good evening, everybody. Um, I saw on Facebook that you're planning on changing public participation rules. Um, I would, as I was reading it, it, it said public speaking limited to 30 minutes for a town of 9,600 people. That means that only 10 people out of a population of 9,600 people can speak, 10 people for, th for three minutes. That doesn't seem fair. Um, I would like to propose a town hall meeting, an open forum, where board members, since you vote yes, you're voting for the town of Mantino, that you should be able to answer questions. You should be able to answer why you voted yes. You should be able to answer questions if we have concerns about the roads. I think it only fair that the town participate. We are a constitutional republic, not becoming, I don't know what, where we all have to be quiet. I have another, just some questions. This is a notepad I've had since September 9th when Pritzker announced the wonderful news with our mayor. Um, a, a, a couple months back, the uh, Kmart land building was, was taxed at anywhere from 28 to $58 million, and it was sold for 130 something thousand dollars. And the taxing body is limiting for 30 years up to $2 million. That doesn't seem fair to the people of Mantino. And why is, was the property, what, three times the amount, sold for three times the amount? Has anybody asked that question? Because I'd like to know. I mean, maybe with a town hall meeting or an open forum, we could get some answers. Here's another question that I'm concerned about, EMPs. Uh, Russia has an EMP that can wipe out the grid. Okay, so what happens with a hydrogen plant or a lithium battery plant? Can they sustain whatever it is to take that plant for months, whatever? I still like to know, have you filled out a long form? Is there an environmental study? Um, we're paying HR Green for what? Project Key, Project what? Rise. Um, I still would like, is it possible too that um, when the vo taxing bodies of Mantino voted yes, did they vote yes on Goshen or did they vote yes on Project Unity? And is that a problem? These are questions that I have. And are there transcripts of those taxing bodies who voted yes? When, what time, who voted yes, and what was said? That's all I have. Next item on the agenda is Village President's Report. Uh, there is nothing on the agenda for that, so Village Administrator's Report. Thank you. I have nothing this evening. Okay. Committee reports. First item is Public Works and Utilities. Trustee Boyce is not here. Trustee Martin, you can take that for him, please. Sure. Uh, Trustee Boyce has Resolution 23-09. 23-09 uh, is HR Green in connection with providing professional engineering services for fiber and fiber and broadcast coordination. Uh, 
Yeah, I have one. Yeah, it's it. As discussed at several meetings, at committee meeting level, the village has been approached by several fiber network providers interested in building an internet fiber network in town. Since we do not have a formal right of way policy or ordinance, we would have very, at this point little control over their activities in building that network. Our engineer, HR Green, has experience in developing an ordinance to protect the building during the process. It will help facilitate not only putting controls in place, but also help with the process of determining what monetary benefits the village should request. That's good. That's it. All right. Um, next is Parks and Recreation. Trustee Martin, do you have anything on the agenda? Okay. Um, next item is planning and zoning. I'm sorry, public safety and health for Trustee Dole. Since she's not here, Trustee Crockett, you're going to take that for her, please? Yes, sir. Uh, Trustee Dole has one, uh, one item on the agenda, which is All right, now maybe you can hear me better. Uh, Trustee Dole had one item on the uh, agenda this evening. It was Ordinance 23-16, which is an ordinance amending Title VII traffic regulations, Chapter 6, Stopping Standing Parking by adding Section 7-6-18, Unscheduled Bus Stop of the Village of Mantino Municipal Code. Uh, as discussed, um, this ordinance is due to the re uh, recent events with buses dropping off migrants at unannounced and random locations. The village is adopting this ordinance in an effort to prevent those random events. The village has limited resources and bus drivers who make these random drops are putting the lives at risk. Uh, and that's all she had on her agenda for this evening. Her next public and safety health committee meeting is scheduled for Wednesday, February 14th, 7 a.m. in the village boardroom. And that's all she had for this evening. Okay, planning and zoning. Uh, yes, uh, we have no items on the agenda this evening. The next planning and zoning committee meeting is scheduled for Tuesday the 23rd, uh, 7 a.m. here in the village boardroom. And the next planning commission meeting is scheduled for February 13th, 6 p.m. here in the village boardroom. And that's all I have for this evening. Thank you. Under finance, we have ordinance 23. 15, an ordinance authorizing the execution of the fourth extension and amendment of business development agreement between the village of Mantino and World Fuels uh, related to sales tax generated at 15 North Main Street in Mantino. Uh, this is just simply an extension of an agreement that we've had ongoing with them for quite some time and very similar to what we have just done for uh, other businesses here in town. In addition to that, we have payment of bills in the amount of $441,226.93, of which uh, $2,100 are from TIF number three. There have been no bills authorized and paid between board cycle, and our next finance committee meeting is scheduled for February 14th at 7 a.m. right here in the village boardroom. General government, Trustee Phillips. I have nothing on the Okay. All right, uh, next item is uh, to take a motion to take a single roll call on the question of passage for the agenda items as designated um, on the agenda, those items being resolution 2309, ordinance 2315, and ordinance 2316. And, and payment of the bills, sorry. Motion. I'll make a motion. Motion by Crockett, second by Phillips. Roll call. Crockett? Yes. Phillips? Yes. Martin? Yes. Geske? Yes. I'd entertain a motion to approve such. Motion by Martin, second by Phillips. Roll call. Martin? Yes. Phillips? Yes. Crockett? Yes. Geske? Yes. Comments? Trustee Martin. Okay. No comments this evening. 
Um, the only comment I have is thank you, Jim, to you guys for doing the snow removal this um, past weekend. It was good. A um, little clarification. I know I saw some posts about salting and trying to keep the roads up. Can you just tell us kind of your philosophy about how we salt intersections and why we don't do the whole stretch? Yep. Uh, majority of time, uh, based on temperatures and the amount of salt that we usually get per year, uh, after we do several rounds of plowing, we just salt intersections, curbs, a couple spots where there might be an elevation change, uh, a couple of the par parking lots, and the sidewalks on the downtown area is what we primarily salt for safety and traffic. Um, but yeah, most of the town, if it's, you know, you see some ice or snow covered road, the salt will track through eventually. We try to, you know, be a little economical with that. And ice rink, I know you guys have been busy with yeah. with other things, but we well, you know, we, we cleared it out on Saturday, and there was still slush ice at the bottom of all that snow, so we kind of left some uh, some tracks and ruts in it. But I think uh, we did some flooding on it today, and I think tomorrow should be in really good shape. So there's been some kids out playing on it. We haven't advertised that it's open just because it hasn't been in really good shape, but I would assume after tomorrow, the rest of the week should be pretty good. It's supposed to warm up this weekend, but or next week rather, so. Just in time for the 40s next week. That's right, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we'll get a couple good days this weekend on it. Good. All right, uh, nothing else. I'd entertain a motion to adjourn. Martin. I'll second. Second by Crackett, roll call. Martin? Yes. Crockett? Yes. Geske? Yes. Phillips? Yes. Motion meetings adjourned.